before we start this video, I would like to take a moment to say thanks to all my patrons. I wouldn't be able to keep doing these videos without you guys, so thank you so much for all your support. It means so much to me. Um, I would also like to say thanks to Code Gorilla, Richter and Joshua for their tier 3 sub. And special thanks to James, Michael, Justin and Sean for their tier 4 sub this month. In this video, we are going to implement step 3. And step 3 says that we need to find all neighbors and unwalkable nodes are ignored. And to find the neighbors, we will have to open up our A star script and add a new function. And this one needs to return a list of nodes. And these nodes will be our neighbors. So find neighbors. Like that. Um, and this one needs to take in the position we are running from. Or we are, we are trying to find the neighbors from. So let's do like this. Vector free int. Uh, parent position. So this is the position of the parent to this neighbor we are finding or all the neighbors we're finding and we need to make a list of nodes and these nodes will be uh, returned. To do this we need to make two for loops one that runs in the x direction and one that runs in the y direction. And why are we doing this? Well let's see here. If we open up our grid and we say that let's just run it so I can click something so you can see it if we say that this is our parent, right, then it has eight neighbors around it. And let's just maximize this easier. It has eight neighbors around it here. And to find this neighbor, it will be x position minus one and y position is zero uh, because there's no change in the y position. To find this one up here, it will be x position is unchanged, so that's zero, but the y position would be plus one. And if to find this one here, x position would be plus one and y would be unchanged. This one down here would be x position unchanged, but y position minus one. Okay, so that's why we are doing uh, these two for loops. So it's going to run from zero to um, one, I guess, and not zero actually minus one, and it needs to be smaller and e or equal to one, smaller or equal to one, and minus one here. So these values here will make sure we run through all neighbors around our parent. Okay. We don't need to add the parent itself uh, to the open list because the parent is not a neighbor. So to make sure that doesn't happen, we will make an if statement here that says, well, y should be different from zero or x should be different from zero. If this is the case, if one of them is, is not zero, well, then we have a neighbor. If they would both be zero. Well, then it's the same node as we have as the parent because zero and zero will not change x and y, and that's that will make sure that we don't add this the parent position as a neighbor. Um, then we say node neighbor is get node from our neighbor position. Uh, parent position, I guess it's called. No, we need to find the neighbor position first. Sorry. So let's make a vector free int. Call neighbor position. Mm, pos actually, we have yeah neighbor position. Sorry, I'm just thinking here. New vector free int, and it will be our the neighbor is found by saying parent position dot x minus x minus the x we have here, so if it's minus x, x is minus 1, well then we're going 1 to the left and we need to use our parent position that y minus y and for the last parameter we can just say parent position dot let's see, parent position dot let's see, like that. So now we have the neighbor position. We have used the parent position and the value from the for loops to find the neighbor's position so the first time it runs, it will be minus one, point minus one. X will be minus one, Y will be minus one, which means the first um, neighbor we will be looking at would be minus one there and minus one there. So this is uh, right there. That's the neighbor we will be looking at the first time. Okay, so now when we have the neighbor's position, we can actually start to add it to this neighbor list. So the neighbor, if we use get node, neighbor position there and then we simply say neighbors uh, there to add 
Nee, bro. So this can be done in two ways. Now we're doing a two lines. You could also take this and do like that. If you want to, I'd just do it on two lines. It's easier to read. Okay, so there we go. Um, we need to return this. So we also need to return our neighbors out here. We say return neighbors like that. And now we have a function that can, a method that can return our neighbors. However, there are some problems with this and we need to fix that, but we will just, just test this first and then we'll add the fix so you can see what's happening. Um, so let's see, we go up here and we will take one step here and say neighbors. Oh, let's make a list actually, list node neighbors. And we fuse it by finding the neighbors here and our current dot position is what we're going to use. So we find all the neighbors, we have all our neighbors here. Um, however, um, if we take a look at the next step, if we say free, go to step, um, yeah, it should be step four, not, not free though. Um, this step here, the neighbors are added to the open list. So that's the next step. And to do that, we can simply just create a new function as well because we have find neighbors. Um, we also have something called examine neighbors and it's in that we would like to add them to the open list. This will be expanded later because there are other steps here where we need to do something with the neighbors here. Um, if the neighbor is already on the open list and everything. So this function we are creating now will be expanded later when we move on to the next steps. But we might as well create the function now. So we have find neighbors first of all. Then we need to examine them. Let's make a function here called examine neighbors. And we take a list of notes and this list of notes is our neighbors. And then we take our current node. So current node is simply going to be used later. We just made the function ready for this. So the first thing we're simply going to do is to take everything um, and add it to our, um, our open list. And we can do that by saying for loop. And let's say we could run it as long as neighbors dot count. And then we say, well, we just want to say open list dot add neighbors i. So this will take all the neighbors and add them to the open list. That's it. Um, and the reason we're not just copying it because we need to put in some parameters so that unwalkable notes will not be added later and stuff, stuff but um, for now this is fine. So in, with examine neighbors done, we can go up here and we have our neighbors and then we can call examine neighbors and add the neighbors there and our current. We're not using the current yet, just, um, just added it because we need it later. And this is what I want to do. I want to split stuff up so that each step is basically divided into a function so that we don't get one function with lots of stuff and it's easier to um, to get an overview when we split it up. So finding neighbors is one thing, examining them is another thing, coloring them is something else. So now open list will be colored. So let's try to run this and see what happens and see if it actually works. So if we take our start, put it there and run to base then we have all our neighbors found. However, it also colors the current here because on the open list, yeah, that's fine then. But the problem is if I would put my, let's say this is unwalkable and my start is here, it will still add the unwalkable as a part of the, of the what is it called, uh, neighbors. And another thing, if I click here, it will also think that there are neighbors outside the map. So we need to make sure that unwalkable nodes are not added and we need to make sure that nodes that doesn't exist are not added else it will try to make a path up here um, and that's not what we want. Let's fix the one with the uh, tiles that doesn't exist first of all and we can do that by going down here and make an if statement. So if our neighbor position isn't our start position that's another fix we just make need to make sure if we examine something uh, the neighbor, if that's the start position, we're not going to add it as a neighbor. There's no reason to examine our start position because it's a part of the path no matter what. That's the first thing we need to do. Then we need to check if um, our 
tile map dot get tile neighbor position so what does this do well this actually checks if the tile exists on uh, on the tile map so we're just going to make sure that the tile exists before we do this if it doesn't exist there's no reason to add it let's try to save here and see what happens now so when I click up here it should only add these and the start of course because it's part of the open list but let's try to create uh, space and there we go so it will take the start node and all these and it will not take the nodes around it um, just want to see something if I go to where is it color tile somewhere there yeah okay so it just takes everything in there and I commented the start thing out somehow so let's try again so that it doesn't call the start yeah there we go now it looks correct um, so now we can find the neighbors and we are making sure that we're not adding something that isn't on the map the next thing we need to do is to make sure that something that isn't walkable uh, will not be added thanks for watching my video please remember that inscope studios is a community founded page so please consider clicking the support link on the screen to see how you can support me and get something back in return